Hello, everyone. And so today I will be talking about the tips and tricks from the ultimate guide to React Native optimization, which I worked on together with some other folks from Callstack. So let's jump in. So my name is Oskar Fresniewski. I'm a senior software engineer at Callstack. I'm a React Native con con contributor. I've created React Native Vision OS, uh, React Native Bottom Tabs, and some other libraries. Um, you can find me under these handles on X and GitHub. So let's start with this. Performance is crucial. A fast and responsive app can significantly impact user satisfaction and retention. If an app is slow, it may abandon, uh, users may abandon it and look for other alternatives. So we have some key metrics that will help you reliably measure how your app is doing. So first one is uh, TTI, which is time to interactive. And the other one is FPS, which is frames per second. So starting with TTI, this metric tells us how much time elapses from touching the app icon to seeing a meaningful content. But to properly measure TTI, we have to know how our app can be launched. So there are multiple startup types. So there's a cold startup, which is when the app is launched from a completely closed state. There's a warm startup that happens when the application is already uh, launched uh, from a, like a completely, uh, no, when it's brought back from the background to the foreground. Uh, there is a hot start when the app is already running and it's simply being brought back to foreground. But there is uh, one more, which is a pre-warned start, which is where iOS is doing this uh, to pre warn the app at a certain time of the day if the user uses the app regularly. So to measure TTI, we can use React Native Performance and its performance matrix uh, to track specific events in the app lifecycle. So for example, we can track uh, native processing initialization using native launch start or run JS bundle start to know when the parsing and execution has, of the bundle has started. There are a lot more events uh, that we can hook into and a whole list can be found in their documentation. But we have to be extra careful when handling uh, the, when measuring this on iOS, because pre-warming is, uh, can call our pre-main initializers hours before the main function of our app is called. So to get a full overview of how to measure TTI with all of the details, you can check out the how to measure TTI chapter of the ultimate guide to React Native optimization. So another key metric is FPS, which is uh, frames per second, which is the rate at which our app redraws the screen. So a single drawing is called a frame. And this, in most cases, you need uh, to draw around 60 frames per second, which leaves us with 16.6 .6 milliseconds uh, to draw the frame. And if our code takes longer, we start dropping frames. And this metric is relatively easy to measure. You can open dev menu by shaking the device and then toggle the perf monitor and you'll be able to see the current FPS on both UI thread and the JavaScript thread. But you have to remember to always disable development, development mode when measuring performance. So FPS in the dev menu is pretty easy to see, but it's hard to track and measure. So you can use flashlights to help you measure and track your FPS and performance over time. This is a similar feature to uh, Lighthouse that's built into Chrome, but this tool currently is only supported on Android. Right, so let's start with Firsty, which is to use concurrent React features. And this is a fundamental shift to how React rendering pipeline works. So, Concurrent React is a fundamental update to React rendering model, which was released together with uh, React 18. So without the concurrent features, once an update starts rendering, nothing can interrupt it until the user sees the result on screen. But with concurrent features, it may start rendering uh, an update, pause in the middle, or even abandon the process altogether. And to use concurrent React in React Native, you have to uh, enable the new architecture. So here is an example of rendering a slow component that's based on use state. So the state is set by typing into a text input. So as you can see, there is a noticeable delay between typing and actually seeing the results. On top of that, 
typing is significantly delayed and the app doesn't feel snappy at all. So let's modify this code a bit by adding use deferred value. And this hook allows us to defer updates to a value by prioritizing more urgent updates, like uh, updating the text input. So we are still using the same really slow list component, uh, but the text input is now a lot smoother. And this makes our app's perceived performance a lot better. So next, let's talk about the React compiler, uh, which can automatically optimize your components thanks to using a compiler. So React compiler is a bubble plugin that memorizes values in your code to reduce React re-renders. Its main purpose is to never write use callback or use memo again. And it has full support for React and React Native DevTools. And it adds this memo batch to components that gets automatically uh, optimized. So the installa installation instructions can be found on their website, but it all boils down to a bubble plugin, which you add to your bubble config. But for a compiler to work properly, your code has to follow the rules of React. So if you have errors like this, you have to fix them first in order for a compiler to help you. There's also a React compiler playground if you want to explore what's happening under the curtain. So what performance improvements can you expect? So enable, enabling React Compiler in the Expensify app you that results of up to 4.3% faster TKI. And the React Compiler can greatly uh, reduce uh, unnecessary renders, but if your app is already heavily memoized, uh, it may only experience uh, slight performance improvements. So just a few days ago, uh, the first release candidate of the React Compiler got released, so we can expect a stable release coming soon. Next, let's talk about using dedicated React Native SDK over the JavaScript counterparts to gain better performance. So cryptographic libraries are essential for securing data, user authentication, and more. One of the most popular ones is Crypto.js, which is a JavaScript implementation of these cryptographic utilities. And replacing Crypto.js with React Native Quick Crypto yields results of up to 58 times faster due to using C++ directly. And this is a quick win that you can apply to your project whenever it does some heavy computations on the JavaScript thread. So next, uh, let's focus on view flattening, which can improve performance by flattening layout-only nodes in your application. So the React Compiler API is designed to be declarative and reusable, allowing developers to compose multiple uh, components and create compo uh, complex layouts. And this approach works well on web, while when creating uh, diffs elements is quite cheap. However, React Native uses native views, uh, which is more expensive to process. So to address this, uh, React Native introduced an optimization called view flattening, which can simplify your native view hierarchy. So on the left, uh, you can see the native view hierarchy having three views, but after identifying layout only views, we can reduce it to just one view. Uh, in the output. But one common issue with view flattening is that it can alter the expected uh, child count of a component. So if a parent view uh, is flattened and it contains layer only children, these children may be merged into parent, resulting in more children being passed to the native side uh, than anticipated. So for example, if our component expected uh, to receive three children, it can now get five of them. Uh, if, for example, children one gets uh, flattened, but we can get around this issue by disabling view flattening for a particular view by passing the collapsible falls to this view. And now our component will receive exactly three children as we expect. Um, next tip is to disable JavaScript bundle compression in order to leverage Hermit's built-in uh, memory mapping. So memory mapping is a technique that maps files into memory, enabling application to access their content directly, which makes it faster. Um, and this is one of the most important optimizations that Hermes does, and it can speed up your TTI. But it turns out it was not leveraged on Android through all these years. So thanks to Mark Rusavi, who found out that the Android that bundle was compressed when bundling for release, which made it impossible for Hermes to leverage module mapping. And this is now the default starting from 0.79, but if you are on an older version, 
you can add no compress in your build.gradle and you should uh, this should give you around 12% of faster DTI. Right, so thanks for your attention. And if you want to see uh, more tips, you should download the ultimate guide to React Native Optimization or grab it from here. And you can scan the QR code, uh, which will give you a free copy. Thank you. Thank <music> you.